hi you guys and welcome to my channel this is a little segment I like to call the weekly stitch but if you actually tune in and watch me you will come to realize it's more of a monthly update right now I haven't been very diligent in uh, doing stuff weekly <laughs> and this is where I like to share finished objects I, I like to knit and crochet I'm new at knitting, um, and I like to share finished objects and works in progress. However, I haven't had many of those. Um, I do have some works in progress, but nothing that I've worked on since the, like any of the last times that I have filmed. I do have one <laughs> finished object. So I love to knit and crochet. I have not had a whole lot of time for it lately. Um, I've been really tired. I've been out of town a lot and a lot of these trips I've had to drive so I don't get a lot of like car knitting done. Um, I like to knit and crochet in the car like when my husband drives but if I'm having to drive then of course I can't do it. That would be fun though wouldn't it? Um, have an autonomous car which I don't know if I would trust an autonomous car though. Uh, but anyways <laughs> that's totally off the subject. Um, so I haven't had a lot of time to do stuff. Um, I know lately it's like I get my house chores done. I haven't been lazy or anything. Usually I'm like, I own up and I'm like, I've just been lazy. Um, I haven't really, I just get my house chores done and then I'm just tired. I don't know. I think a lot of it is I really need to get back into a fitness routine. In fact, the last time I filmed, it was the day after my birthday, and I vowed on my birthday that I am going to start working out again. So that's something that's been taking a little bit of time. Um, I really need it, um, according to the doctor. <laughs> well, not according. I don't know why I do air quotes. Um, according to my doctor, I am overweight, and anything that I even look up online, I know that I am and that's probably why I am very tired all the time. So it's important to me to become, you know, to get back into like healthier habits, um, which is, um, you know, why I haven't devoted a whole lot of time to my knit and crochet. Um, even though I really love it, it is a very sedentary hobby. You know, you do a lot of sitting. Um, not saying I'm going to stop doing it because I'm going to definitely, my goal is to get back working on it more. So, um, I don't even have tea today. Usually I'm like, oh, this is my tea for the day. I'm drinking water right now. <laughs> um, so yes, I still drink my tea all the time too, but right now it's water. I'm like kind of on a water kick. So, oh, and look at my little sea turtle. My friend Tracy got that for me from... Jekyll Island, so my cute little sea turtle and then my autism sticker. Uh, but anyways, that's definitely has nothing to do with what I'm talking about today. Slow start, right? <laughs> so um, anyways, that's kind of a, like why I don't really have any projects for you, but I literally just finished and wove the ends in on my, you ready for it, March dishcloth. <laughs> so this is it. This is a dishcloth um, from the kitchen sink shop. Garlene is the owner of the kitchen sink shop and um, she does these things. So if you subscribe to her newsletter, um, I will of course link her in the description box. If you subscribe to her newsletter, uh, you get a free pattern each month for a dishcloth. And I thought what better way for me to really learn how to knit, and I really am because I'm learning all kinds of different stitches and stuff, is to um, knit some dishcloths. So um, I'm very excited because like, if you guys remember, here are my first two. So this is my first one and you see these like different little like patterns and everything. I just think it's really cool that I'm learning all these different stitches and techniques. This was my second one, you guys, my February. And look, I made a heart, you know, I was just so excited about that because I am, like I said, I'm new to knitting. So, um, and this one, it's got like what looks like a little cable pattern and it really was not difficult. Let's see, I think that's how it's supposed to be. I don't think it really matters. So this is the Biscotti dishcloth. Um, this year, her whole theme are different types of cookies and treats. So um, March was the Biscotti and she does give you a 
recipe for the treat also. But um, simple little twist stitch. It looks more difficult than what it was. Even the back looks nice because it's like, it looks like a, like a thicker rib knit or, you know, rib design. But I'm very excited. So I am knitting these um, using Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton. So this particular color is the bruschetta colorway. Um, what I'm doing, so I have picked out five, four, five. I'm doing a set for me, my mom, my mother-in-law, and my two sisters-in-law. So two, four, five. five. I picked out five of their variegated colorways. And then for each set, I picked out three solids. So this is my variegated colorway called Sunsetting. And then, of course, my second one was purple because I picked out colors in each one. Um, and then the bruschetta you just saw. And so my April dishcloth will be done in this color called Aspen um, because, you know, I just think all the colors look nice together. So I did that with each set I'm doing. Eventually, I will get started on their sets of dishcloths, and I'll show you their yarn. But for now, I'm working on mine because I figured I want to practice using mine first and get them looking a little better. Um, of course, I haven't blocked these either. I probably will not block my own just because I'm just going to use them. Of course, I'm not going to use them until I finish with the whole set. So everybody's getting a set of 12 dishcloths for Christmas. Um, that's my goal is to, you know, I, which means I need to, I have a lot of catching up to do um, if I'm only on March on mine and haven't started on theirs yet. So, um, so yeah, um, these are my dishcloths so far. The next one is going to be April and it is called the mini eggs dishcloth and it's done like it's inspired by those little mini those little nest cookies with the little mini eggs in them. So um, I'm excited to start that it looks it looks like it's going to be fairly easy for me to follow along with. Um, Garlene has a YouTube channel so I will also link her YouTube channel where she gives you so like different stitches like I think this one she had like for one of these stitch combos she had a video on um this one was pretty self-explanatory and then she did tell you how to do this twist stitch so she has very clear concise instructions um very easy to understand and I mean like I said I'm a beginner these were my first these are my first three completed knit projects ever the only other thing I've really practiced on was a sock that I <laughs> I think I started a year and a half ago and I kept ripping it rip, ripping it out and um, <laughs> I it's still now just a ball of yarn so eventually I will get one sock done just to see how I do with socks but that's for another day <laughs> so anyways that is my only finished object um, all my works in progress are just things that you've already seen I have not well, I have one work in progress right now. No, I have quite a few because I have all my temperature blankets that I still need to finish because those are 2022 temperature blankets and they're supposed to be, they were supposed to be Christmas gifts. Um, I will be lucky if they get them for Christmas this year. Oh, so bad. I'm such a, I'm not really, I mean, I am a procrastinator, but I, you know, tend to procrastinate on, you know, more productive things and, and tend to do crafts more. But I've just been really like <laughs> dragging my feet on those and I need to get to work on those. Hopefully I'll get some oomph and, <laughs> and be able to get started. So um, that's really all I have for that. <laughs> um, I'm excited though. I really want to get that sock done because as my practice sock because summer sock, sock camp has started. In fact, I was going to use that sock for summer sock camp last year, um, which is something that... Um, just a little thing that the crazy sock lady puts on every year. Um, this year she's doing it again, very laid back this year, not a lot of rules. You can have works in progress. However, that sock is not going to be a summer sock camp sock because it has to be a pair and I can't get that yarn anymore. So if I just finish one sock as a practice sock, that's fine because I have tons of yarn I can use for more socks. Um, and then in July, Nitty Natty is having sock week. So I'm excited. I really want to get going on the rest of my projects so that I can focus on making socks. Um, hopefully I'm okay at them. 
they're not going to be the best looking socks, I'm sure, <laughs> but I'll get a lot of practice. So, uh, next we have a lot of yarn. <laughs> That's really all I have left for this video is my one, uh, finished dish, dish cloth and then lots of yarn. So we're going to start with Mandy's makings because it is, um, my monthly yarn club that I get from her. Um, so her theme for this year is uh, coffee shop crew. So she has picked out some coffee shops. She has had some of her um, customers, subscribers, whatever, uh, pick out some coffee shops. And so what she does is she goes and whatever coffee shop it is, she'll look at a picture. She'll pick out some real good, nice colors from the pictures at the coffee shop. And then she creates a yarn, a sock set actually to, um, kind of like pull in, you know, everything about that coffee shop. So, um, this particular one is call your coffee shop out of Albion, Illinois. I may be pronouncing that wrong. Um, and I did do a little bit of research about it. Um, so let me grab my notes. All right, if you see me take small breaks, there is a reason behind that. It won't really seem like a break to you guys. It just might be like a tiny little blip in recording. It is because I film from my phone because I don't have a camera. I do have a camera. I have a really, I, well, pretty decent DSLR that I take pictures with. However, without the little like flippy screen that cameras have, I can't really tell like what I'm recording. So I don't record on that one. Um, I'd like to get a, you know, eventually get a decent film camera, like camera to film with, like just a generic, like not generic, just a general digital camera that has the little flippy screen. However, <laughs> thoughts of getting a camera has been put on hold because my computer has died. <laughs> so it really stinks that uh, my computer has died and now I have to get a new computer. Like there's something up with it. And this is so off of what I was talking about earlier. Um, I can't even like restore it. Like we tried to wipe it clean and totally restore it and re-download Windows. It won't even let me do that. I have no idea what's going on. Like it started out where it just won't connect to the internet. Like it doesn't even recognize that we have a wireless, like, you know, we have wireless router or whatever. Like it doesn't even recognize my wireless, um, setup or whatever I don't know it was like one day it worked and then I shut the computer down one day and shut it down very properly and then next thing I know it didn't work so I don't know if it's going to be cheaper to buy a new computer or you know because I, I don't have a fancy laptop it's I don't need a fancy laptop I just need something to get online with and to be able to like edit pictures and videos and stuff and that's really all I need it for I'm not a gamer or anything like that um but I don't know if it's going to be less expensive to get it repaired or to just go ahead and just get a whole new laptop. So anyways, um, so what I have to do is because my phone doesn't have a whole lot of memory, I keep deleting things. I got it where it picks up um, instead of the going to the phone, things go to my memory card. I have too many pictures, lots of pictures of my kids and grandkids. So, um, and videos, videos take up a lot of space. So anyways, um, what I have to do is transfer whatever I film to um, my husband's computer because I have to use his computer, which is his school computer that he, because he's a teacher, um, transfer it there. Then, <laughs> so it cleans up some space on my phone. So that's why you see these little like slight pauses, I guess. Anyways, back to what we we're talking about, and that is the yarn. So Mandy's Makings, Mandy, of course, I always say it, I like to brag on it, that Mandy is my cousin, for any of you familiar with Mandy's Makings, um, and she dyes beautiful, beautiful yarn. Um, in fact, she has a set, if you're watching this today on Friday, she has a set coming out today. It is a share a pair set. If you don't know what share a pair is, basically you get two different sock sets. You can keep both of them for yourself. Um, you can get with a friend and you guys can split the cost or you can gift one to someone else and um, it is called Military Family and it's red, white, and blue yarn and I love anything patriotic and she knows that so you might be seeing that in another video. 
but today we're focusing on my monthly yarn club. Last year she did a monthly club based on the Wizard of Oz and I didn't realize like what I wasn't really buying yarn at the time um, until about halfway through the year and it made me wish that I would have started hers because I just love her sock sets. She is, has a really good eye for color and putting unique colors together and so I knew I had to jump in on this year's and I'm one of those people like all or nothing so I have to get the whole year <laughs> which I, I love supporting her anyway. So Collier Coffee House like I said, it's in Illinois, and a little piece of history that I found on it, because um, I like to look up things about these coffee houses, is actually a restored house that um, sits across the street from the town square. So it is a cute little coffee shop. Like, I'm writing all these down, and if I ever visit any of these places, I'll definitely have to visit their coffee shop. So this is the yarn. Hopefully it picks up correctly. It's picking up slightly like a brighter, like, more rusty than what it is. This is, it kind of reminds me of my dishcloth. Like, let's see. There's my dishcloth yarn. It's very close to it, actually. So it's like a rusty orange, little hint of brown in there. And then you have the big, um, the big 100 grand skein, uh, skein, <laughs> skein. Um, it is fingering weight. Her sock sets are fingering weight for the coffee shop crew. Um, it's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, so you get your 100 grams, 100 grams gain here and your 10, um, your 10 gram mini. Um, but it has like this, this color in the yarn, although it's a little like more of like a faded, um, version of this. Uh, and then it looks like, it's almost like a... Like she did some black but it turned gray like if you know what i'm saying like i don't know or it almost has little hints of kind of like blue almost like a blue black but really pretty i think it'll make beautiful socks one day when i actually start making socks with all of this yarn but i love it all, every single month like she just wows me like every time she'll so these go live on the first of every month on in her etsy shop she does um have an etsy shop that she uses for her yarn and um she will show a picture of the coffee house and so i look and i'm like oh what colors is she gonna pull out of here today um or for this month and so i'm always curious and it's always a nice surprise too so that is my mandy's making monthly yarn and so next um, we have, anyway, so yeah, these go live on the first of every month. Um, sometimes you have lots of time to get them. You might have a few days. Sometimes they go very quickly. It's hit or miss. So, um, I know she has an advent right now that she is doing, I think a second round on, um, orders They might still be available. You have to check, um, always follow her Instagram. She puts everything in her Instagram stories. Um, her advent for this year is called, it's a share a pair advent. Um, it's Christmas at the farmhouse, I think is what it's called. And she curates everything so nicely. She gets the best people, like most beautiful bags when she does her collections, uh, stitch markers, which I don't really know what all comes in the Christmas advent. Um, but like when she does her seasonal boxes, always get in on those. Those are really hard to come by. Her seasonal boxes go super quickly. In fact, I'm so sad that I've missed the first two. Um, but <laughs> that's how it is. Like you have to be on top of the things because her, um, seasonal boxes are really good. So Mandy's makings, I will always, always sing her praises because she's awesome and of course we're related to so um the next yarn that i got is i was not planning on this but she caught me with the colors uh pretty twisted yarns um she did this colorway called punky power which when you see it <laughs> not to mention she also donated i don't know if the, i guess the chair this was her charity yarn for may maybe I think she does a charity yarn every month, which I am always down with that. I am always for anybody doing something good. Mandy's Makings yarn, a percentage of all her yarn sales goes to the A21 campaign for um, to help victims of human trafficking. So, uh, Pretty Twisted Yarns, this is Punky Power, and I know this is going to not show up. It does show up pretty well, but it is nothing as glorious as it is in person. 
and she was all out of just a normal fingering weight yarn when I ordered but so I settled for Stardust it's um superwash extra fine merino with nylon and lurex um so there is her logo you can see and she has she also has a YouTube channel so I will make sure that I link her YouTube channel as well as her Facebook and or not Facebook Instagram and her website um, but I was actually glad that this was you know the choice I had to get because look at the sparkles with these colors oh, how fun is that I love bright neons and I love anything really because I do love more muted colors but I really love bright colors too so this is super fun and it's so soft um, I've never worked with anything with sparkle in it before, so I am curious to see how this does. Um, hopefully it's not too bad, but is that, isn't that that pretty? I think she might still have some of this. Um, she did um, just, I think she did a video recently of her June charity yarn. So I know this one, the charity was, it's for, it was a charity for suicide prevention. So, um, can't remember it right offhand and then I know that the June one is going to be for the Trevor project so yes um, very pretty yarn I love her so she is pretty twisty yarns she is out of Spring Hill Florida so um, my next yarn this is one that I've been wanting to get for a while it is from Kimber's Cozy Creations um, again she's on Instagram she is also, I think she's on YouTube also. She is out of Wisconsin. So I follow her very closely on Instagram and all winter long, like she would just post all these snow pictures and I was just amazed at how much snow, I mean, they're in Wisconsin, of course, you're going to get a lot of snow. So I would just always be amazed at snow because I'm in Eastern North Carolina. We rarely get snow and when we do, it's just very little. So Crinkles roll fast, just letting you know. So this sock set that I got is called Snow Day. And this is a product of a exper an experiment that Kimber and her mother did. Um, you know, during all of their snow, you may as well uh, make it work for you, right? Um, where they took their yarn, each of them, took some yarn, put it in the dye pan, put it outside and let the snow cover it and then went outside and got it and then I guess for those of you familiar with hand dyeing yarn they put the dyes in you know on top of the snow and however the snow melted that it made the dyes you know the yarn took the dyes however the snow melted and this is what they came up with so the big skein is what they came up with um I don't I don't think this one was dyed with snow um but so she used this as inspiration and therefore called it snow day but it has like pretty like purples and teals and aquas and blues um there's some hot pink speckles in there um very pretty i mean these are my colors right here i just absolutely love these colors like it kind of reminds you of you know the jazz cup like the little white cup with the teal and the little purple squiggly Kind of reminds me of that which I actually have that little graphic on my car <laughs> um I have to maybe insert a picture of my car so you guys can see um but yeah that reminds me of that and then it has two little mini so you get your 100 grand skein this is her cozy fingering sock set I think she also has it on DK weight um, and then you get your two um, little minis here. This one is like a gray color, like a darker, not dark, dark gray, but kind of dark. Um, and then you get a little aqua one. So that will make some cute socks. Um, I'm excited. I wanted it for a while. And then finally, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to get it. <laughs> because I think for me, it's the story behind how they came up with it. More so than the yarn itself. I mean, the colors, yes but i love how yarns have different stories and so if it has a story and it i think it's cool then it jumps in my cart <laughs> so that is kimber's cozy creations um 
I just thought that was really neat. So, and then my last sprinkles. Uh, my last bit of yarn that I want to share with you guys is my Yarnable subscription. This is my third month getting it. Um, so this is my June subscription. And I can tell you, they are on top of things when it comes to shipping. Um, so I do not have my own, like, affiliate, you know, discount code. I use the one from the Crazy Sock Lady. Um, I can post her code. Uh, I hope that's okay that I'm doing that. Um, if you have a maker that you follow and you know they have a Yarnable code, by all means use theirs. Um, but I just use hers because she's the first person that I ever heard about Yarnable from. So Yarnable is from, um, is uh, like a subscription service from Hypnotic Yarn. And um, I just love what they do. Like I said, my third month getting it. My April and my May were amazing. It's not just the yarn that's beautiful. All the little extras are so well thought of so let's get into this okay so here it is it comes packaged like this um, usually do the yarn first let's do the extras first so your yarn comes in one of these little little cotton drawstring bags I like that just another way to keep your yarn a little extra safe um, I'm going to get some extras and this time we got one of these little bags last month which these are perfect for like pretty much anything um these are good to throw into your project bags um, and then you get this card and the card will have a scratch off coupon code and then it will have um all kinds of little facts about like you know about whatever the the theme is <clears throat> excuse me Whatever the theme is, it has a little bit about all the extras, and I just love this. So, the theme this month, the name of the yarn is Pollen Party. So, of course, it's going to be bee theme, which I think is really cool. Um, I um, I don't really have, like, a huge interest in bees. Um, I do love getting local honey. Um, I do think it's really cool, like, you know, people who do keep bees. I know my son wants to keep bees eventually. Um, probably like when he gets done with college, um, he's discussed keeping bees. Um, so, uh, but I don't know, like the more I think about it, I do get more like interested in the whole aspect of honeybees. So <laughs> I thought this was really cool. So we're going to go through the extras first and then we'll show you the yarn just to change it up a little bit. So the first thing is Vanilla Bean Lip Balm by B. Bella. And just look at this. Check out the packaging. It's like a little wooden uh, tube. And let's see. Am I doing this right? <laughs> what am I doing wrong here, Kristen? I can't get it open. Oh, <laughs> that's the twisty top. It has uh, here has a peel off label we'll peel it off so I can show you user error Kristen um <laughs> has a seal of course so you you know for safety reasons it did I say vanilla bean yes so there oh wow <laughs> I was on the verge of like twisting it up too much okay it smells so good but look at her little pat like her packaging is just the cutest look at that B. Bella handcrafted lip balm. Now I'm like hoping that I did not twist it up too much. I don't think I did. Um, anyways, um, but she's got little bee, look at the little bees on it. So it is lip balm made with, it says, with only the finest and highest grade ingredients available, including locally sourced Wisconsin local focus <laughs> locally sourced wisconsin beeswax i just love that so that is very cute next you have we have from twice sheared sheep which i will tell you more about them in just a little bit um a little notions tin look at the cute little bee so it says sweet honeybee notions tin from twice sheared sheep this tin features a sticker bearing a yarnable exclusive watercolor bee Painted by the owner and lead designer, Don Prickett. So, did you see that? So, it's just a little, little Notions tin. Perfect for, like, I can keep my little snips in there. Um, so, 
some yarn needles uh, for weaving in ends, little uh, progress keepers and stitch markers, all kinds of little things. I think that is super cute. Um, yeah, like I bet I could even, nope, I think it's a little too big. <laughs> Thought I could keep that in there, but no. Um, so Twice Shared Sheep actually has these, and I'm sure you can get them anywhere, but the little slap bracelet sock rulers, but she's doing one exclusively for knit, the Nitty Natty Sock Week and has the little Sock Week logo. So that's when I saw the shop, I was like, oh, I was just checking out her shop. So you might see like a goodie from her shop in another video. Um, but yeah, super cute. And I will link all these vendors um, that do the extras. I will link them in the description box also so you can check them out. Um, and then next we have... B and Honeycomb Stitch Marker Set manufactured for Yarnable. So super cute. Um, so these are your um, just normal round stitch markers. Like if you can see, it's just a continuous round. They're not progress keepers. They are stitch markers. Um, but we have the Honeycomb, which is really cute. And then we have the little B. So very, very cute. I love it. Like I said, I've never really been one that's been like super huge into bees, but I don't know, like in recent, like recently I've really been getting into like being really interested in bees. So, so yeah, those are the extras. And now for the yarn, um, and I, here, let's tell you some facts. So, um, did you know, I like the little, did you knows <laughs> on here, the buzz pollination technique where bees vibrate their wings to release pollen from certain flowers is essential for the pollination of some crops, such as blueberries and tomatoes. Certain flowers, such as bluebells, can only be pollinated by bumblebees due to the frequency of their buzz. That is really cool. <laughs> so that's really neat. So Yarnable, um, you can choose. There is very, um, there's some very versatile like options or whatever. Um, you can customize it to how you like it. I only get this the single sock skein right now but after seeing crazy sock ladies uh yarnable video i'm like oh do i want to start getting the extra mini skein probably do um so you can get one skein i think you can get two skeins if you want um you can get dk weight you can get sock weight i decided for sock um but I may, like I said, change it up and start getting the mini because you can get a mini, a coordinating mini. Um, but this is this month's yarn. It is a very light blue. And then it has all these little speckles. It is called Pollen Party, but it's got these little speckles. And if you look at them, like they kind of remind you like a field of wildflowers. How cool is that? And there's so many different colors. Let's see if I can tell you some. Like, and, and it's like darker blue too. So it's um mostly solid, but with some you know, darker spots in here. And I don't know, I'm not a yarn dyer. So you have solids, of course, and then you have like self striping, you have speckled. What's the difference? And you have tonals and you have semi solids or this kind of the same. I don't know. I don't dye yarn. <laughs> so I'm not really sure. Maybe I should ask my cousin Mandy. Um, but anyway, so there's like greens and pinks. I see some yellow just really cool I like I love the thought process behind this because I guess it is supposed to look like a field of wildflowers um the coordinating mini skein that crazy sack lady had was like a hot pink that really like it matches the pink in here perfectly but yeah so um that is my yarnable yarn for this month and I don't think I'm ever going to stop this subscription now. <laughs> I love subscription boxes. I get um, the Sips by T subscription and I've always wanted to do other subscription boxes. I haven't really done any more um, recently, um, but my yarn subscription, oh, going to keep the yarnable. There's a few more yarn subscriptions that I would like to try out, um, but you know, I have to budget you know wisely and I actually have to start using the yarn if I'm gonna keep buying it <laughs> so um, that is all for any acquired items that I have um, I guess now we will talk about um, oh careful buddy uh, my little guys in here he just finished school today it is his last day of school 
He got out early today. We are so excited. He's like over here doing a little celebration dance. I wish you could see him. Um, <laughs> he is doing his laundry. <laughs> he's like in here in the kitchen. We have a basket of laundry. And he's like doing a little dance. And he's like getting his socks and putting them away. Like he's really good about that. I think he's just particular about where he wants his socks to go. So he like grabs his socks real quick. He's He loves socks. So I know that when I start making socks and I get like quicker at it, He's probably going to be my number one fan of my socks. <laughs> I'll have to get him some color, let him pick out some yarn colors. So, um, other things not yarn related for one, um, I have been, um, I started another hobby, you know, because I'm really doing good at keeping up with the ones I have, right? <laughs> insert sarcasm there I decided to start reading again um, my really good friend Casey reads a lot um, my friends Tracy and Gretchen read um, I used to love to read I used to go to the library all the time and then I just got to where you know this age of technology where you're just constantly looking at your phone and I'm thinking I need something to do at night when I'm laying in bed because I don't I'm not one of those people I can go to sleep pretty quickly if I'm really tired but I'm one of those people who I kind of need to like settle down and do something and being on the phone, that's not a good way to try to get your brain to kind of chill, you know? So I thought reading would be good. Um, I have to have a book though. I cannot do like read on a Kindle or I can't do audiobooks. If I do an audiobook, I know it's going to happen. I'm not going to pay attention. Um, I like to have the physical book in my hand. I, I like the smell of books. I know that's really weird. So I got for my first book to getting back to reading is Where the Crawdad Dead Sing. I'm sure most of you have read it. I want to watch the movie. However, I don't want to watch the movie until I read the book. I am one of those people that if there's a book and a movie, if I watch the movie first, for some reason, I can't read the book afterwards. And I know usually the book has a lot more in it, but I guess because once I see it like visually, I expect it to be exactly like that and because the book's not always like that I, I just can't do it now I can read a book and then go back and watch the movie and I'm fine I've done that a lot with a lot of like Nicholas Sparks um but yeah I figured since I want to watch the movie I'll get the book I'm only two chapters in <laughs> I've not been doing very well at keeping up with it but we'll see <laughs> um the only problem is I do like to read however I'm like oh I could be doing other things you know so I guess that's where audiobooks are better but I like a physical book I'm a pen and paper person I would rather write everything down I'm not big on using the computer to do things I'm a list maker I just I like the feel of the paper and like I said I like the smell of the book and that's just me I'm kind of old school that way I guess um and then other things let's see other things I've been enjoying so podcasts of course I always watch crazy sock lady when she comes on I do have a lot of her episodes that I need to go back and rewatch um I have been binge watching a homespun house because I'm trying to catch way up like I went back to the very beginning of her channel and I'm probably about two-thirds of the way through by now of her channel um I'll just listen to her like while I'm knitting or crocheting or something um and then I've learned that if I listen to a podcast while I do my walk outside it makes my walk go a lot faster so crazy sock lady homespun house of course those are some I've really been into recently I mean I catch some other ones here and there um tv shows so let's see I um we we kind of tent we have a little tv at our dinner table I know that sounds terrible um, but we watch TV while we eat. And so we do have to keep it Bentley friendly, Bentley, my 11 year old. Um, and so some of the things we've been watching, um, we finally finished manifest. Have you guys like, did you watch manifest? Um, I remember watching it when it was coming on air and, you know, we would catch the episodes that would come on afterwards. And then if you, if you're a fan of it, you know how it ended and it left us hanging and the network canceled it. And so Netflix picked it up and I'm so glad. And so we finally finished it and like, oh my goodness, like finally we got our closure, I guess. <laughs> so that was good. We finished that completely. Um, and so our little 
show we watch kind of at the dinner table. We've been watching The Rookie. For some reason, I thought it was a brand new show, but it's definitely not. Um, it's got like, what, like six seasons, I think. It's a pretty good show. I like it. It's it got, you know, it's got your typical police stuff going on, but it's kind of comical too. So we've been enjoying that. And then we also just recently started, because it's brand new, um, we've been watching the Hot Wheels Challenge. So my little guy loves Hot Wheels. We are a, an automotive family. My husband drifts. Um, if you're not familiar with drifting, just look up drifting on YouTube. Um, and so we, my, my little guy has so many Hot Wheels. I don't know how he keeps up with what he has. He knows what he has. <laughs> if we go to the store, he expects to get a Hot Wheels, like either at Walmart or Target. Um, not that he expects. I mean, if he, we told him no, he would know no. But he, I mean, it's a Hot Wheels. It's not that much. And we use those for prizes and stuff. So when we saw that the show was coming on, we were like, oh my goodness, <laughs> we have to watch it. Um, if you were familiar with Pimp My Ride <laughs> from back in the day, it's kind of Pimp My Ride-esque, <laughs> but it's still, I don't know. I think it's a cute show. One of my husband's friends is actually one of the judges. Um, well, not close friend, but he knew him from back when he lived in Orlando and stuff. Um, so it's something we're really, you know, I think we're going to like, like, you know, enjoy watching it with Bentley. Um, it kind of reminds me too, like a little bit of, if you guys watch the Lego, uh, show that they had, I forget what it's called, where they have to build things out of Legos. It kind of gives me that vibe, you know, that whole, we bring in people who, you know, like, you know, for that one, it was Legos. This one, it's people that really like Hot Wheels and then they come in and build something and then they move on to the next round or whatever. So, um, and then I have shows that I watch when nobody's home or my little guy's not home because sometimes they're not the friendliest. They might have language or other things that. I don't think my 11 year old should watch. Um, one of those being my, my, my college son actually told me about this called the bear. I did not know about the show and I'm really excited because season two is going to be coming out soon. Um, I really got into that and I don't know, like, um, just like my son said, the cinematography was really good. Something about how they filmed it. Like it, it was very, it, it just kind of, brought you in and then the storyline too so that was really good if you haven't seen the bear um that's pretty good and then I finished Firefly Lane <laughs> yes tears were involved so I was excited to finish that so those are some shows I've been enjoying um the other thing I do like to do is I like to listen to what they call rewatch podcast so basically you watch a show um episode by episode and then after each episode, you listen to the podcast that goes with it. And it's usually people who were on the show go back and talk about different things about the episode. So I have a handful of shows I do that for. And then again, I like to listen to the podcast while I'm doing my walk or something. So um, One Tree Hill, one of my most favorite shows ever. Um, Glee, uh, Gilmore Girls, Friday Night Lights. And then I just recently found out Boy Meets World has a rewatch podcast. So those are some of the things I enjoy that's not knitting or crocheting. Um, what are your favorite shows? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyways, another thing that I'm trying to do is each month I am trying to um, buy some yarn from a new to me indie dyer. So I have a whole list of them. If you have some favorites that I should check out, let me know. Um, you know, just trying to support people who are makers. So anyways, that is all I have. <laughs> it's kind of long, but, um, and I did a lot of rambling. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, so anyways, uh, I thank you for watching. If you did watch it all the way through and hopefully I will actually come to you in a week <laughs> with some more stuff that I've, even, I, I, you know, at least started, <laughs> um, maybe some finished items too. So we shall see. <laughs> All right. In the meantime, uh, take care. Talk to you guys soon.